Howdy YouTube, Esnex here with a video for ya. It's been a little while since my last video. I've been keeping busy watching other YouTube types of content. Nothing or hardly any Linux related stuff over the last month. So, I'm back in the mood I guess to give it a little update of my projects. Last video was an update video as well. I said I wouldn't be doing these but I really don't have much else to say, and the Linux world it just isn't as exciting as it used to be. So, Easy Archer, I rolled out new ISOs over the last oh 20 days. I've had two uploads of ISO releases. The current final ISOs are up on SourceForge, OSDN.net, and archive.org, of course, as well as the previous ISOs. Now, on the 17th, the date of the ISOs that are most current, there is really only one change besides all the Arch package updates that happen all the time, and it involves Calamares and the installation process on a UEFI system. Specifically, I changed the mount point for the ESP or the EFI system partition. Now, in the past, I had Calamari set to mount the ESP at slash boot slash EFI. Now, for at least a year, if not longer, my install guides and install scripts, the Easy Arch install scripts, defaulted to using the mount point slash EFI. Now, with Grub, it really doesn't matter. Grub will work either way. It doesn't make a difference. However, the mount point of slash EFI may make it easier if a user installs my system and at some point in uh, later on wants to switch or play with system deboot. Now, System Deboot's documentation uses examples with the mount point slash EFI. I don't know if that's a necessity. I don't use System Deboot, but if you want to play with it, I think it might make it easier doing it this way. Plus, the benefit that I saw uh, changing Calamari's installer to use slash EFI is bringing it in line with my other installation methods on the ISO. And that allows me to comfortably use the same grub install.sh script to update grub when the package is updated. Now, I'll go into that in this video because that really was my motivation to do this change. I was concerned that the grub install sh script that I wrote, if you try to use it on a system installed with my install guides or install script, would not work correctly without modification. This way, changing Calamari's to into line, to be in, in line with the same settings used in my install scripts and guides allows me to use just one grub install.sh script. Now, what is the grub install sh script? Let's go over to the file system, go over to USR, go over to local and bin. And this is an installed Easy Archer, XFC desktop, obviously, installed with my current final ISO dated January 17, 2023. We'll open up the grub install sh with genie here, or genie, however you like to pronounce it. It's a very simple script. I'll make the window a little bigger so we have the full lines uh, displayed. What it does is it tests if there's a directory sys slash firmware firmware slash EFI. And if there is that directory, it runs the grub install command for an EFI install because that directory 
will only exist on a system installed on an EFI system. And then it runs the grub mk config, outputting a new grub.cfg file. Now, if this directory does not exist, then the script assumes it's installed on a legacy BIOS system, and it gets the mount point of the root file system, assuming that the root file system is installed on the same device as grub. Now, this is an assumption I make for myself, and it works for myself. It may not work for you. If you want to use this script and you have a different setup where your root file system is on a different drive device than where you want grub installed, you will have to modify this script. Easy to do. You can replace this statement, which gets the device name of the root file system and passes it to the grub install command. You can replace this with whatever you want. You have to know what you're doing before you use the script. And I don't encourage people to use this unless you are very comfortable reading the very simple commands and modifying it if necessary. That being said, let's take a look at how this script is implemented automatically. That's via what's called something called a Pac-Man hook. Now I described that in my documentation folder on the live and installed system. Easy Archer, docs, there is a file called grub update hook.txt. So let's open that up. That's also a very simple file. Instructs you how to create the directory, the hooks directory, how to create the hook itself, and then gives you the actual lines of text to put in that hook file. So let's open up a terminal. Let's make it a little bigger. And let's start just by copying and pasting these commands. So the command sudo make dir etc pacman d slash hooks. This folder might exist. Let's see. Well, it needs a password first. And that folder already exists. So we can go on to the next line here of creating the actual file. So let's paste that in. And now we have nano opened with a blank space for us to copy the text of the file into. So let's do that. And yes, we do want to paste. Very good. Now all we have to do in nano is control O to write out the file and control X to exit. Simple. Our hook is there. So let's CD over to that directory just to make sure. ETC pacman.d hooks and ls. And now we have the hook where it should be. Very good. Let's go ahead and run an update. So sudo pacman syu. And we should have quite a few updates. And it looks like Grub is getting an update. So our hook will be tested and our script will be tested. Very cool. So let's hit enter for yes. And we can see the download speed is progressing at a decent pace, decent enough. 
we have 280 megabytes they're about to download a new kernel as well and that's taking the most amount of time but we'll be done with this in a couple seconds and then it will go through the installing of the packages after it checks them so a new kernel will take a moment or two running the grub install and grub make config will also take another moment we can see that installing an updated grub tells us to run grub install and grub mk config our hook should do that by calling our grub install.sh script now we're on an efi enabled virtual machine here so it's still doing the kernel update here or the modules the broadcom module update for the new kernel building the uh, init ram fs very good and after this it should go into running grub install very good we can see the output here the text output reinstall grub when it updates that is the text right out of the hook we created as I said I don't encourage this it's not set up by default if you want to make use of this please do I use it all the time because it ensures that grub install and grub and McKay config are run when they need to be run let me pause the video for one moment here sorry about that okay we're still waiting on grub install here it should output eventually there we go no error reported and we are done we have run our updates so let's exit here let's close this out and let's reboot make sure everything worked correctly now running in VirtualBox we might encounter something I've experienced well we didn't it's rebooting very quickly well I spoke too soon looks like we are encountering the stop process that seems to be affecting my VMs, my VirtualBox VMs. This is not happening for me in Virt Manager and QEMU. So it's something specific to how my ISOs are interacting in VirtualBox. I do have the VirtualBox guest editions, I believe, installed the package in the ISO. So that is not the issue. I will pause the video again and we shall be back. I can find my mouse. Okay, so we shut down and now we are rebooting. Well, let's see what happens. So far, so good. As messages we want to see as we start up the system. And we are almost there at the login manager here. Very good. Let's see if our VM remembered our display settings, and it looks like it did. Perfect. Looks like we are back up and running. Cool. So that worked very well. Let's do a uname A. And we are on the latest kernel. Very nice. Very good. If we uh, clear the screen here and do an LSBLK 
you can see the mount points SDA1 is slash EFI, SDA2 is root, and SDA3 is swap. Perfect. That's the way it should look. Okay, folks. If you head over to SourceForge, look up Easy Arch. If you head over to OSDN.net, look up Easy Arch. And as I said, archive.org, same thing. Take care. Stay safe. Hope you had a pleasant and fun new year. You'll see me in another one, folks. Bye-bye.